today is uh, April the 15th, 2013. I'm going to do a quick video here. It's like my light's blinking up there. I'm going to do a quick video here on this very nice uh, Fender DeVille 212. It has a hum problem, but I've already found it, but I wanted to document it, just show how simple it is. And also show you um, something you might find interesting. And I've, I have had a... Um, a bias probe is there is there known for some time and, and and I'll show you what I do with that but anyway this one had a hum problem it, well I, I put the original tube back in it's actually this tube right here but let me show you turn everything down except the master when I turn the master up I get that hmm hum. let me show you what it sounds like it's annoying customer that's what they brought it to me for actually the uh, tubes aren't terribly microphonic the sockets not bad must have some kind of cathode or uh, filament to cathode short or something but you hear the hum and let's see if we put it back out here because I don't want to scare myself out of my wits here that's what we get it's not much power 7.7 .7 milliwatts. I mean, it's 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 low, but you can hear it. Okay. Anyway, the problem is this guy right here, just a tube. Uh, it's uh, that fixed it. This is a little JJ. There's nothing wrong with JJs. This is not a rocket at, at them, but I'd put hums. Okay. While it's warming back up, that problem is solved. I'll show you a, an instrument I built some time ago that I use occasionally but uh, not a lot but I, I think one of the reasons I want to talk about this uh, bias probe is I uh, have read some blogs and there has been a lot of discussion in some of them about whether there are risks in using a bias probe type of arrangement like this and the answer is if you're actually um, taking the plate voltage and running it over to where you can run it into a meter, the answer is absolutely yes, there is a risk. Because you've got the plate voltage exposed. Right here, right now, as I'm saying all this, the plate voltage is on these two red pins. And on these and the screen voltage, which is virtually the same as the plate voltage on these two yellow pins, and here's the two cathode pins. The way this thing is set up is I don't have the high voltage on now is this is just a let me show you here this is a good one this is one of those old World War II military things god they're so good they it doesn't want to let go does it there it is thank goodness okay it's just an, an octal plug as you can see runs over to my box let me plug it back in it's a lot of work. I guess that's why I don't use bias probes. Anyway, this one that I built here, the way that it works is um, these switches right here, plate, screen, and cathode, they actually short these two together. The, the screen shorts these two together and the cathode shorts these two together. So when it's in this mode with all the switches up, see I say up is short and down is open then the tube is virtually in here. Now, it will have some effect on it if you run uh, frequency type tests on it, but if you're just running uh, static measurements like I am here, it, it works great. So we plug the meter in, it's measuring zero. Get some of the glare off. But when I open this switch right here, well, we gotta turn it on, we gotta turn the standby off. See, there's our, there's our plate current right there. 29.29.3 let's write that down here 29.3 that's plate and then if we close that one and then move our probe to screen and open it up we get our screen current 1.1 1.1 we add those up and we get 4 uh, 30.4 Okay, let's close that one and then put it in the and then put it in the cathode. 
that one. How can we get 30 point four, five, six, whatever. Things are varying a little bit. You know, the line voltage varies. Everything varies a little bit. Tubes are never just rock solid. But there it is, 30.45. So uh, the cathode current is indeed the uh, sum of the plate. And this is the plate current. This is the screen. And this is a cathode. So a lot of people measure the cathode current because it's safer because it's at the it's at the bottom end of the tube. So uh, with the circuit open, you would measure high voltage. You would measure the plate voltage, but at least it's got the the, the resistance of the tube to limit the current. So if you if you get across the cathode to ground, you're only going to get bit. But if you get across the plate or the screen to ground, you're going to get electrocuted. So yes, bias probes do have inherent risk in them because they bring the high voltage out. I don't know of any other probes that measure uh, all three of the parameters like, like this little homebrew job that I have. It, all it is is a little chassis box with, you can take one tube out at a time. But anyway, you can build these if you like. And then you put the other tube in there and you measure it and if and hopefully, you know, if, if life is really good for you, then uh, the two tubes will measure the same. But there's also many other ways. I don't know if it'll measure out here, but uh, many of you that's seen any of my videos, you'll see that measuring the, uh, the plate temperature is actually a reasonably effective method. See, this measure about 220. This measures, whoops, I'm sorry. I get to look at what I'm doing instead of the camera. About the same, so it's okay. This thing has worked out really nice. It's actually a very nice clean amp. One thing it did is it had a, a tube right here that was causing it to hum. I'd already checked out the uh, capacitors. The way I checked them out is actually by just jumpering another one across them here, like this guy right here. Everybody's got a method for testing things. Um, wholesale replacing capacitors, well, that's one thing that, that's kind of one school of thought, but that's a lot of work, that's a lot of expense, and oftentimes not necessary. There are some ESR meters, which stands for Equivalent Series Resistance, that I do not have one. I've thought about getting one, but I'm not sure if more toys is actually going to make me be able to um, post better videos or fix equipment faster or better. Uh, just like this little device here. It's kind of nice to have, nice to play with, but sometimes you just want to get the job done and and uh, move on. But anyway, very nice amp. Just wanted to show you that hum can be caused just simply by a, by a bad tube, and I think this tube is actually new. I'm not quite sure of that. I think the, uh, the client said that uh, he had just replaced them all. But it was causing this one to hum and let's see, right now when we turn the turn up, see that's our home now. If you remember a while ago, we were getting pretty much full scale. And we had like a few milli, down to 0.1 milliwatts. This is watts up here, direct readout. Uh, with the master volume, and, and that's the one that, that controlled it. So now we have nothing. And now we have nothing. So, uh, Sometimes the problem can be as simple as, simple as just a, a tube and the only way to really diagnose, I don't know if there is a really good way to diagnose it, the only way to solve it sometimes is just replacement. Got to have replacement parts or, or oftentimes you just can't work on things. And uh, here is uh, uh, an interesting little device if you want to build one that, that you might find interesting. But if you do buy a bias probe, that opens up the uh, plate circuit so that you can plug it into a meter, an ammeter, there is risk there because there is high voltage there. So I mean, you can read all the blogs you want, but that is a fact. Now the safer ones, what they're going to do is they're going to, uh, the, the wires coming out of it that goes to your meter is going to be two wires across a cathode resistor. And if the cathode resistor is a 1 ohm, then your reading here in millivolts on your meter is going to translate directly to milliohms. I mean to, to milliamps, I'm sorry. Millivolts is going to translate to milli... Millivolts is going to translate to uh, milliamps. 
That's right. Millivolts are going to translate to milliamps directly if you have a one ohm resistor, which is what they most of them have. And that's the safest method. You're probably not going to get electrocuted that way. But if you if you bring pin three out of these tubes, uh, you are you you there is a, a definite risk in dealing with these little things. And this one does bring pin three and pin four out. So there is high voltage on those points right there. And if I touch it, you uh, you will see how I react. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Uh, but it is there. Let me show you. Let me show you. Yeah. Nothing like, nothing like, uh, like seeing it. Let's get another meter right here. I can do this quickly. And, uh, okay, let's see. Let's plug that into common. Oop, sorry for all the fumbling. Okay. And let's hook our ground up here. Let's turn our meter on to volts. Okay. And from ground to, we'll touch it to either one of these. See, there's our plate voltage, 456 volts, 456 volts right there. Okay, now I'm going to put it on the screen right there. There it is again. There's the screen voltage. It's real. It's on both sides because the switch is closed. If I open them up, it's only going to be on one side. See, it's on that side, but when I move it to here, see, there's nothing. That's 0 0.067. But I'm bringing the high voltage out from the tube socket along this wire into this box, and there is my plate voltage, there's my screen voltage, there's my cathode voltage. So there you go. That's the way these bias probes work. So if you have one, know what type you have. Know if you have one that's actually measuring uh, the plate current by bringing the plate lead out and opening it so that you could put your meter in series with it. Or if you have one that's measuring a voltage across a resistor in the cathode circuit. The one with the resistor in the cathode circuit is going to be the much safer one. If you have one that opens up the plate lead, then be careful because it can get you. Now, I don't care how many blogs you read, that's a fact. There's the voltage that you just saw right out there on those pins. And if I have my hand on this chassis and get across one of those, it's going to light me up. So you got to be careful. Hope this helps.